Mike, we're looking forward to it. You and Lonnie had a good one. We expect the same here as 989 Sports presents the second in our doubleheader. Eighth ranked Illinois against the top ranked team in the country. Duke comes in at number one. These two teams, Dick, we saw them play last year at a non neutral site, the United Center, three point ball game, now a non neutral site at Greensboro. But the two Williams guards have really matured since we saw them last year. Well, Frankie Williams, he had a bad game when you and I saw him score right. for 17. He's a different player. He's really matured. And Bill Self has turned him loose. He's allowed him to create, look for a shot. He was sensational in the Maui Classic. Against Temple, Duke was really struggling. Down six with three minutes plus in the game and Jason Williams took over he dominated got into the lane penetrated make the trifecta I'll tell you tonight Jason Williams Frankie Williams you got two dominant point guards well we're the little guys and those <laughs> are the little guys but we got our big guy courtside to talk about the rest of the lineups let's go to Jay Billis Jay Brad one of the most intriguing and perhaps most important matchups in tonight's game is going to be in the paint for Bill Self and his fighting Illini, that means the man in the middle is going to be Marcus Griffin, who is their best interior scorer and their best post defender. What he really does that is special, though, is he changes ends. He can truly run the court. That really can affect matchups because guards have to pick him up. His counterpart for Duke, Carlos Boozer, the Blue Devils' leading scorer, 19 points per game, shooting about 65% from the field. What he is really doing well is feeding off of the penetration of Jason Williams. If Boozer has his hands ready and is ready to finish, he can truly be special. Brett. So Duke 5 and 0 for Mike Shushevsky 503 wins his name on the court at Cameron now two and three against Illinois though and Bill Self his first season at Illinois after sensational stops at Oral Roberts in Tulsa and has his team off to a four and one start 32 and five last year suffered three losses to Fresno State won the North Carolina in the tournament did a great job at Tulsa as you said Brad we got a Tournament environment here today. Big time officials as well. Rick Hartzell, Carl Hess, Mike Woods got the ball in hand. And from the Greensboro Coliseum, which is ACC land, as you can see, some of the Cameron crazies have made their way here and we're underway. And it's Williams controlling for the Atlanta. And there they are, Williams against Williams, Jason against Frankie. You have two of the best going head to head. Corey Bradford. With Nate James all over him. Trying to lob it inside and Battier with a steal. Battier, one of America's premier defensive players, two years in a row, won the award. Boozer goes straight up, had it partially blocked, got it back, and it's Jason Williams on a three. Rattled out. Rebound strong up there is Sergio McClain. He's very physical. Son of a coach, won four straight state championships in high school. Immediately to the hole is Frank Williams as Illinois. He can get a shot off anytime he wants. I thought last year in a structured environment, it really hindered his kind of game. He, not to take it in the lock Kruger, he knew how to win. But Frank Williams has to have the freedom and the license to be able to do what he wants with the rock. Mike Wood with the whistle as they're trying to get the 35 second clock in order on the far end Frank Williams who Dick was just talking about averaging 17.4 a game now we got it straightened out both these clubs feature a lot of balance when you look at Duke they're perimeter oriented if they're making the three they were eight for 27 against Temple Mike Krzyzewski's club needs the trifecta to fall and they must create turnovers with their defensive pressure so Mike 50 seconds into the game and already we've got clock problems. Well, he's got a court named after him, like you said, Coach K Court. Now, do you believe, as you look here at the last meeting between both clubs, look at all the stats? Very similar. And at the end, it was 72 to 69. At that time, it was number 16, Duke, over number 15, Illinois. Look at the bottom, though. Frank Williams wore for 17 in that game. I'll guarantee you will not see that tonight. You know, I was mentioning, Mike, she says, you ready for this? So look at Frank Williams right here from out of Peoria Manual High School. Mike Krzyzewski, they were writing letters his second and third year to Tom Butters asking him to be fired because he was 11 and 17 and 10 and 17. But he had the patience. Tom Butters should be the MVP of Duke for keeping him. We've known Jay Billis forever. He didn't even tell us that story until recently that they had actually passed a petition around to the athletes about whether or not he should go. Great feed underneath by Williams. Dunleavy is fouled as he went up on the baseline. Brian Cook is going to pick up the foul. Take a look at a matchup last year in their last meeting. The points really don't tell the story when you look at Frankie Williams because it was his shooting. Did not really shoot the basketball well. 
At seven assists with a lot of turnovers as well. Dunleavy misses the free throw. And Duke still looking to get on the board. Michael Dunleavy comes from a great basketball family. Dad, the coach of the Portland Trailblazers, has been documented. Now, here comes the Duke pressure. It did not bother John Chaney's club. Lynn Greer did a great job for John Chaney. Let's see what happens here. No problem there either. Williams ahead to Bradford from 15. Off the back iron, the rebound is Boozers. Here comes Williams running with James, two on two. He'll take it himself. Got it. He's so strong to the basket. Normally, you'd like to see him give the ball up in that situation, Brad. So it's Duke by one. This guy's got to make shots. He was one for eight in his last two games. Corey Bradford, he's a big-time shooter, but he's struggling right now. One of the great three-point shooters in the Big Ten. He was one for eight against Arizona, and yet they lost by only three. Cook wheels and deals, and off the backside, James with a rebound. Jay Bill is very high on Cook, and I can see why. He's got quick feet, long arms. He's very agile. Boozer squares up, crosses it to James. This is my unsung hero on this Duke team, Nate James. Dunleavy for three, rips it. I'll tell you one thing. They got shooters all over the floor, and they spread the court so well. They spread, they get excellent spacing, and if they're knocking down the trifecta, it becomes a long, long night. Six straight for Duke. They lead 6-2. Here's McLean into the front court. See, Duke really likes to not only bother you with harassment on a perimeter, but to take you away from running your offensive sets. Plus, it takes a good 10 seconds off that clock, and you have to think differently. Here's a reverse layup. Nice move by Williams on the baseline. So he's got the first four for the Atlanta. You can just feel looking at his body language that he has so much confidence now with the ball in his hands. Outside jumper off the mark. Battier picks up, tries a three. Got it. I'll tell you, Battier's knocking down the three. In New York, it wasn't there for him, Brad, at the Big Apple. It was against Princeton and Cameron. You and I saw that one. He knocked nine of them down. We got big time matchups on a perimeter today. We're going to take a look at Jason Williams right now. Watch him push the ball. Too. There he is. Very strong. Now here's Frank Wimson. Anything you could do, I can do better. There's a little reverse. Good looking finger roll with the reverse off the glass. Four for Frank Williams. That's all the scoring for Illinois so far in the first two minutes, 50 seconds. And again, Duke shows some token backcourt pressure. You know, last year he struggled a little bit too, Brad, because he had to sit the year out the year prior, and it takes a little while to get adjusted to your teammates. That's right. It's really worked as a unit. Johnson had just checked in. Backdoor pass McLean, and he's hammered on the baseline by Boozer. Carlos Boozer comes over to give help and picks up the foul. He's the one player that Duke cannot afford to lose on the inside. If they lose Boozer, they lose so much from their perimeter. There's no backdoor cut. Clinton 201, how to run the backdoor cut, and here's Boozer coming over for help. Boy, I tell you, he made sure McLean wasn't going to get that shot. But I would attack Boozer. If I were right now, if I were Illinois, I would go to Griffin, I would go to their people, and try to get him in foul trouble. I don't believe they have an answer for Carlos Boozer Duke in terms of their bench, where they do have answers on a perimeter. They're desperately looking for a seventh man, and that hasn't jumped to the surface yet. McLean, only a 59% free throw shooter, but he got the second. Hey, Jay, I was just talking about the fact that they can't afford to lose Boozer. Your feelings on that? Well, I think that's exactly right. Carlos Boozer plays a very important role for this Duke team. He's their anchor inside, their best defender in the post. Casey Sanders is a guy that could emerge as an answer for them inside, but he's got to start playing some more minutes and becoming more of a factor to develop that kind of depth. He's been injured a little bit with a hamstring pull. Boozer missed on the hook. You saw Johnson clear the rebound, but he walks with it on the other end. Lucas Johnson with the turnover. The one thing about Illinois, they'll rotate and use their bench, and they're a very deep basketball team, and they're very physical. I'll tell you, I like everything I've seen thus far at this club on the two and watching them practice today. Well, when, when Bill Self showed up at one of the first conditioning practices wearing Army fatigues and had his uh, camouflage face on, they knew that uh, they were going to have to be a physical team. They have worked like never before on that part of their game. Jason Williams, three rims out. That's the part that Matt Darty wants to bring to North Carolina. Told me on the phone, he says, I want guys that are tough. I want guys that are physical. Williams leans in. Didn't get the roll. And the rebound kept alive on the baseline by Williams. Battier ahead to James. He's got Williams on the flank. 
He'll take it himself. Got it. Nice strong drive by Mr. James. Mr. Versatility. And the Cameron Crazies go bananas in Greensboro. Oh, we're not at Durham, North Carolina, but they're still very active. Watch Battier clear it out of there. That's some of the intangibles he brings to the table. I mean, there's Shane Battier on the floor, right to Nate James. Fifth year senior, had a big time game in New York in the semifinals against Texas. There he is with the roll, had 26 in the NIT semifinal. Against Texas, Nate, one of the senior co captains. And he's sort of like the forgotten guy. You know, you think about Williams at Battier and Boozer. I told you, this is my guy. This is one of the pieces of glue that holds the team together. He just doesn't get all the credit everybody else does. But he got the three-point play, and he helps Duke to a seven-point lead. Duke by seven. 15-47 remaining in the first half. As Illinois got the first basket, and then... Duke went on a tear with six straight, and they haven't looked back yet. Casey Sanders on the floor now, the big guy. They really got to get some minutes out of him. He's got to be a productive player in terms of rebounding and of blocking shots. at 6'11 for Duke. Stretch their bench a little bit. Battier's got one of Duke's two three-pointers so far, and Jay, that's been his forte so far this year. Well, he's got 17 on the season, Brad. 60% of Shane Battier's points come on three-point shots, and you really have to stay with him. I think he is a player like Corey Bradford that you cannot leave and help out off of. You've got to stay with him and force him to put the ball on the floor. He's still going to score, but he he won't score in bunches like he can from the three-point yeah, line. Good point. I'll tell you, Jay, also to bring a little balance to his game, he has ability to post on the interior as well. And I think he's going a little too exclusive to the perimeter. Well, Duke as a team, 40% of the shots they take are from three-point land. So he's kind of following the rest of the group. But you're right, Dick. Eventually, they're going to have to be a more balanced team inside and outside. That foul, by the way, was on Sanders. And now a nice move on the baseline by Griffin. I'll tell you, Marcus Griffin, a real strong physical player on the inside, had a big game against Gary Williams in Maryland. That was a big win because Maryland's going to get their ship right. They're just too talented, and Gary's too good at help. Griffin had 19 points, eight rebounds in that game against the Terrapins. Dunleavy misses a three, and it's cleared off by Brian Cook. And they dominated the Terrapins on the glass, beat them by 18 rebounds. Yeah, they had a big hit, 55-37 on the glass, and a walk down on the baseline, the fourth turnover against Illinois. This one on Marcus Griffin. Don't forget, coming up tonight, 9.30 on ESPN2, more of the ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports. Georgia Tech, they're off to a good start with their new coach. They'll take on... The Hawkeyes in Iowa, and they have won two so far this season. I'll tell you one thing, Georgia Tech, a fun style of basketball. Boy, they're getting up and down the floor. Well, sir, Paul Ewing got him running, pressing, shooting. Boozer had it stripped away, so a nice job defensively after Griffin had the turnover. He comes right back and gets it back for Illinois. Three-pointer by McLean. Duhon clears off the miss. The freshman bringing it down now as he's playing Co point guard. Battier missed a three, and this one's going to go way out. He shot that from Raleigh, North Carolina. <laughs> he sure I mean, did. There you go, Jay. was Matt <laughs> Raleigh. Come on, Shane Battier. <laughs> so they're going to get some screens for Corey Bradford. He's too good a shooter. He's got to come off the screen. He's not going to create a shot off a dribble penetration. Williams on Williams. And here's Bradford. There's around a screen, and he nails a three. Thank you, there's, coach. There's the screen. They ran the little screen. See, he's the kind of guy that's catch and shoot basketball player from out of Memphis, Tennessee. I was teasing him say, today. I said, You're on the cover of my magazine? I can't put you on the cover, one for eight. I can't put you out there, Corey. Well, it's almost like he had an earphone in to hear you talk <laughs> about what he had to do as he buried the three and gets the Alana back to within a deuce. Little skip pass inside. Battier gets McLean strong on the baseline, but they got a piece of it underneath. Griffin did, and McLean comes out of there with it. That's what we were talking about a moment ago, about Battier going inside and post. That was a good score move by Shane. Nice dump off pass by Williams, but in too deep was Cook. Here's Duhat. Great cross court to Dunleavy on the fly. I'll tell you, they can run the court. If they open the court, get in transition, their perimeter people excel. Once they get that three-on-one, two-on-one, they will flat-out convert. That was a beautiful pass. It had eyes all the way across the court. Jason Williams and Frank Williams, you see their maturity in their second year. Last year, you and I watched Frank Williams really struggle. Here's a steal. Duhon gets oh, it ahead. The loser. He missed the jam, but he's fouled. I tell you, what a great look by Duhon. With the left hand, kicking it out to Boozer. Most players would have never made that pass. 
Here comes the loose ball. Take a look at it right here. Now watch him kick it out with the left hand. He's got great vision. He sees his teammate out on the right. Two dribbles and then just pushed it with the left hand to Boozer and Cook made sure that Boozer was going to have to go to the free throw line. Look at those turnovers right now. Five to one ratio and that certainly doesn't wear well for Illinois. You don't want to turn the ball over at those numbers. Is Duhon, Mr. Basketball in Louisiana, broke the hearts of the people of Kentucky when he said no to Tubby Smith. A lot of people's hearts. You got that right. Boozer missed a free throw, and in comes Horvath and Sanders, and Dunleavy and Battier will get a breather. Max Krzyzewski, 503 wins, as you said earlier, had that. Big W over his alma mater, blowout city, Army. Yeah. I didn't know he played Army on Saturday. 91-48, that wasn't much of a game. And his daughter, Jamie's dating the point guard. Oh, boy. Chris Petula. Here you go with the ball. gossip now. Oh, yeah. Here's Bradford for three. Nice block out by Horvath to get the rebound of Boozer. And you don't see that very often, guys blocking out like he did. Boozer from 17 straight on. And the rebound is Frank Williams up and down the court. Here's a long lead pass, dangerous one, and out of bounds. They threw that one away. Yeah, tough pass right there. Tough pass. And this is how they teach you to do it in Minnesota, though. Horvath, watch this block out coming up after this miss. Yeah, that is a great block out. That's what they teach. That's how to block out. Block out 301. Get your body between the player, the offensive player in the basket. Seal them off. Did a great job spreading. Fundamentally, just so solid. Duke by five. New Holland Williams both out there with Horvath Boozer, and this is Nate James. I knew you gave Minnesota a little pluck there. <laughs> I didn't let that pass Hey, me. he can play offense, too, but he missed a shot up and over the backboard. Bill Self did a great job at Tulsa, as he said, and Tulsa's been a cradle for coaches. Tubby Smith, Nolan Richardson, 32-5 last year. Now Bill came through Oklahoma State as a player and was the assistant coach there under both Eddie Sutton and Leonard Hamilton. Some good guys that he's worked with and under. And now he's got a good staff of his own. Underneath with the left hand, good move by Archibald. He's done a nice job off the bench. He had a dozen against Texas Southern over the weekend. Yeah, Archibald and Harrington on a perimeter have really been positive guys off the bench for them. And Grupalia now coming back from the knee injury has not practiced a great deal. Played well against Arizona. Williams pull up jumper for Jason. He's got the medium range jumper. He can beat you off the dribble and get into the lane, and that's what makes him so effective. And Duke with some backward pressure, but Williams breaks free of Duha. Oh, they're going to say walk with him. They yeah, took that extra step. Good ball, took that extra step. So one Williams turns it over, but the other Williams, Jason for Duke, he had the down. pull up jumper. There he is, with that little pull up shade, Brad. ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports and Duke leading by five, 17 to 12. Brad Nessler, Dick Vitale, Jay Billis with you as Duke so far in the first half has done it with some fast breaks. They've done it with their backcourt going inside as Jason Williams has four points. They've done it with their big guys going outside. Battier, his three-pointer. And they've done it with some turnovers and on the break. Dunleavy on this one on the fly, and that's how they've taken the lead. Their transition points have been key so far in this half, and they lead by five and 11 17 remaining in the half. Now well, they face a little backcourt pressure. Two major parts of Duke is their transition game and their perimeter game shooting the three. Battier will try another. Got it. And there it is. They step out of that perimeter as well as anybody in America. And they have so many weapons and so many guys that can knock that trifecta down. Well, when you got a 6'10 guy out there knocking it down, it confuses the defense a little bit, too. I'll tell you, he is so valuable. Look at him playing on the defensive end against the volume. Shane Battier. James runs into the Battier and underneath. Ball loose. Johnson trying to save it. All he does is save it to Duhon. And Duke will run. He can pass the basketball. He's got great vision. He waits for numbers and cross courts it to a wide open Dunleavy for three. Wow, on the rebound. Here's Howard who just checked in on the last break. Nice little two point. Yeah, nice little move by Howard. Good dribble penetration to bench. I'll tell you, they're not afraid to go to their bench. They are a very deep team in Illinois. One of the deepest teams in the Big Ten. 
Tomorrow night, I'll see Michigan State up there with the end zone, and they're very deep. He told me his team is deeper this year than last year. Michigan State is the coach's pick for the Big Ten title. Illinois is the media's pick to win the Big Ten crown. Should be a battle one, two, but what about some of the surprises in the Big Ten? Purdue beating Arizona. Yeah. A salute to Gene Cady. And what about Jerry Sutton? Oh, what about Penn State being Kentucky? At Lexington, first time. Only the second time ever that somebody's picked off Kentucky in an opener at Rupp. And the two Crispin brothers, 57 yeah. points. 31 and 26 put a show on down there in Lexington. Hey, Brad, I can't wait to get to Lexington. They got food now. They got food in the press room. <laughs> you in, you single-handedly did that. They got food in the press room. Might be hot dogs and hamburgers, but they got food. Show it. Here we go. Go, 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 You bucked them for <laughs> 10 years about that. That's the TCM. Yeah, CM now retires, and now they got food. Got rid of his salary. They got enough money for food. Oh, what a nice pass! Yeah, alive underneath. Ty Griffin. Nice look inside. Archibald up, but it had it slapped before he went. And a whistle and a foul underneath might be on Boozer. If so, it's going to be his second. Mike Wood says yes. It's on Boozer. He picks up his second personal. And he comes big right now. Coming up, time of the game. coming up tomorrow, the 2000 debut of College Hoops Tonight. Every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday, College Hoops Tonight will document the day and stories of College Hoops. Tomorrow's edition, of course, recap the ACC Big Ten Challenge and features our own big man, Jay Billis. Tune in tomorrow midnight for College Hoops Tonight. Billis, you're never going to be home now. <laughs> Wendy's going to wonder just who you are if you're just a figment of her imagination. I think it is Carl Rabbit did a great job with baseball tonight. Basketball. Okay. <laughs> oh, I hope she didn't hear you say that. Jason Williams on the break, and again, transition baskets for Duke. And Jay Billis gives a good smile as his Dukies take it to the rack and score. Once a Dukie, always a Duke. Hey, Jay, what about the transition right now? What do you see out there in terms of tempo with Duke? Well, one of the things, Dick, that Duke's trying to do is stop ball reversal, and they're really doing a nice job of pushing Illinois further out on the court, 10 to about 10 feet further than they're used to getting it. That's out of their comfort zone, but Illinois is pounding them on the glass, and that's got to improve if Duke wants to keep this advantage. And Archibald did just that there on the offensive glass, just made his presence felt in the lane, and then just a little finger roll to pick up his fourth point. And that's where we expected them to have the advantage, on the inside. And James a little shake and bake runs into a double team and an offensive foul. See, right now, you look at the time frame of this game, Brad. Carlos Boozer on the sideline. He said if he's on the sideline, it might become a different looking team. And there's a look at Carlos on the sideline. It was 22 14 when he went out of the game. We'll keep a record of that with eight minutes to go. It's now 22 16. So Dunleavy checks in as James sits down also with two fouls for Duke. See, Duke has now become an exclusive perimeter game without Mr. Boozer on the floor. Unless Battier rotates to the inside. Archibald, the first guy off the bench in there. Otherwise, it's nice a starting pass. group for Illinois. McLean gets the fish, uh, the uh, dish from Griffin. They're so used to playing with each other. Peoria Manuel won four state championships. Three of those guys played on that team. Williams, McLean, and Griffin. And coached by McLean's dad. Still coaching out PR. Williams pull up jumper again. A second time he's done that. He's got eight. He's doing a show on right now early. You can see his confidence. Unbelievable. He was brilliant last year in the ACC tournament with the MVP. Almost a steal there. Christensen. Bradford. Skips it inside to Griffin. Nice turn off the glass, and there's Archibald trying to clean up again. Tell you what, he's controlling things down there within four feet of the hoop right now. Yeah, that's what we expected. We expected Illinois, based on their numbers versus Maryland and UNLV, that they would really be the dominant club on a baseline. And Bill Self's got to be really happy with the way they're attacking on the glass. They're on the offensive boards. They're beating Duke to the basketball on the offensive glass. They've got twice as many rebounds right now, 14 to 7. They're really high on some new recruits they got coming in next year from out of Chicago. Manly, Chicago High School, Luther. They got Luther Head coming in. They really think he's going to be a special player. And Roger Powell, I remember his dad, 6'6", played from Illinois State. From out of Joliet, Illinois. So Robert Archibald off the bench has five points, and he's the leading scorer right now for the Illini. 6'11", 250-pound junior on a ball in Missouri. Got them both six for Archibald. 
And that cuts the lead down to four. 7.48 to go first half. Larry Beal in the studio. Clemson and Northwestern in action. Will Solomon feeding Chris Hobbs here. Clemson wins it 57-44. The ACC up 2-0. Brad, Big Ten pride at stake here. So the ACC doing a good job tonight. Wake Forest has already beaten Michigan. You saw the Clemson Northwestern game, and here it is 24 to 20. So the ACC two wins so far. Wow! And I could hear some Big Ten people screaming out, "Hey, Illinois beat Maryland, Ohio State beat Florida State." <laughs> Different tournaments. <laughs> And let's put the record straight. This will not indicate what is the score in the conference. Not when you play one time against someone. But it's just fantastic to have these kind of matchups to eliminate all the cupcakes that so many people play early. That's right. Who would you rather watch, number one against number eight or Duke right. against somebody that's uh, ranked 200th in the country? Battier. Nice clear off by Corey Bradford. See, right now on attack, Boozer. I would go right after Boozer to try and get him a third foul. They're a different team with him on that sideline. Williams said it swatted from behind, but Duhon picks up his first foul. <laughs> Frank Williams at the free throw line. He's one of three Mr. Basketballs on their team. Frank Williams, also Brian Cook, and also Mr. Griffin, all were Mr. Basketballs. In Illinois. As you mentioned Manuel High School in Peoria. He was star there. Yeah, he played for Wayne McLean. Prior to Wayne McLean, Dick Van Syak was the coach. He did a great job, and Wayne was his assistant. Talked about them today with Lauren Tate. Did a fine job on radio. And Steve Bardo's in the house today doing radio. Former member of the Fly in the Line Eye, 1989. Right. One of my favorite teams in Lutu. I love that team. Kendall Gill, Bardo. I should Steve. Steve Bardo right the here. back of Steve, anyway. Yeah, he was a heady player. Only Duke by a deuce until Dunleavy changes that in a hurry. What a slicing drive. Man, he's quick and deceptive with his quickness. He has a lot of versatility. He really does. Play four spots out there. Bradford and McLean. Got to get Bradford some shots. And a steal by Jason Williams. Bradford trying to track him down. He won't get him. Jason Williams just playing single inning in super basketball. St. Joseph's Patuxent High School. Got a walk. Yes, sir. Good call. Boy, and that's back-to-back -back turnovers, and that's 11 now. You can't do that against Duke. And Temple only had 11 the entire game. They spread the floor and put the ball in Greer's hands. Oh, they got the Cameron Crazy go bananas. There's Duke in a little spurt. This is danger time right now for Illinois. Still a long time to go, but Duke with a couple big plays defensively, and Jason Williams, 10 points to lead the way. It's Duke by six. Jim Delaney, the commissioner of the Big Ten in the house, as is John Swafford of the ACC. Yeah, Delaney sat the bench, played for North Carolina. He was Pine City, would have made my whole airport team. He's still sitting right now. <laughs> you were talking about Boozer. When he went out, the game change in Illinois' favor, he came back in, Duke stretches it out again. Well, you know, he gives them a presence that nobody else gives them on their team, and that's post play on the interior. Without him on the floor, they don't have a really big-time option on the inside. He is so valuable. The lob to Dunleavy was in a little too deep on the baseline. Nice hustle by Johnson to pick up the loose ball. Here's Harrington in the front. they got to get Harrington some shots he knocked down five for five from the trifecta in his last game and was five for nine against Arizona he made ten of his last 14 from the three-point line backcourt pass a backdoor pass that wasn't supposed to be but Griffin ran it down six minutes in the half Frank Williams pull up jumper underneath nice cleanup by Marcus Griffin and that's where they're so effective attacking the glass that's the strength of their game Jay Billis Illinois has done a good job of is they've really exploited Michael Dunleavy's presence down low. Archibald and then Griffin on that last possession where they're able to push him out. And I think Illinois has just been a little bit stronger in those possessions than has Duke thus far in the ballgame. And McLean a little bit stronger there. He just flat took that ball away inside. And Williams kicks it out. Offensive foul on Williams. McLean did a great job rotating down on Carlos Boozer. 
Look at this. Look at this good looking guy. I mean, he's got great looks, makes money, he's got the whole package. He's only 38 years old. Wait wow. till he gets as old as us. The ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports continues tomorrow on ESPN. Great doubleheader. Virginia and Purdue. And then it'll be Wisconsin against Maryland. That'll be a battle of tempos, won't it? Well, you talk about physical right there. Wisconsin, great defensive player in Kelly. Dick Bennett's glove shot the miracle last year going to the final four. Nice ball movement. Williams will take the jumper. Missed a three. Griffin clears the glass for the Illini. He's a force inside. He's an enforcer. He's one of those warriors, Marcus Griffin. See, I'd go to him right now against Boozer. I, I would, too. Go, yes, sir. I'd bring the ball inside. So they're going to know time and situation and strategy. Here's McClay. Outside, wide open Johnson. Knocked it down. Great inside, outside play. McClay on the interior. Sergio has a great deal of recognition. Finds the open man. And the fighting Illini are excited. They got some Illini fans here jumping with joy. It's only the second three-pointer for Johnson this year. Couldn't have come at a better time for his team. I'll tell you, Champagne is going to be on fire this season. This club is legit. Duha adjusts in midair, takes the shot. The rebound is the Illini's, and Illinois can lead this trip for the first time since it was 2-0 if they score. What I like about this team is they got good balance inside and on the perimeter. McClay, nice move against Battier. Didn't get the shot. Rebound strong by Williams. Oh, he went up there and smacked that thing out of the air. But he palmed it on the other end. Yeah, Rick Bartzell with the call. He carried that baby. Look at Coach K. We're going to have Coach K. Court now. Now watch the inside-outside action. See right there, McClain. Great recognition. Finds the open man. Spotting out the three. And Lucas knocks it down. We talked about it being a dangerous time at 28 to 22 going into that timeout after the Illini had turned it over two times in a row. But coming out of that timeout, they've had the better of it as they've scored five straight points here in the last two minutes and 20 seconds. Hey, I wonder if Ron Cougar wants to make a trade. The Atlanta <laughs> Hawks for the fighting Illini. I think they got better personnel hey. than what Lodge working with down in Atlanta. Where I, you from? I feel bad for him right now. It's I a really struggle do. right there. Yes, sir. And he's a good coach, though. He has great understanding of the game, great teacher. I just thought he's made for college. I'm shocked he's in the NBA. He's one guy that shocked me that made the transition from college to the NBA. Miles going to be on Horvath. That'll be his first. And it sends Archibald to the free throw line and Archibald's been one of the pleasant surprises. He played well actually in this event last year. At nine points, six rebounds, and a couple of steals. And tonight, six points so far. And Olaf Kruger's going to be a little happy tonight. His Hawks beat the Wizards. Two college coaches, Leonard Hamilton and Kruger. Archibald trying to follow his own miss, and all he does is come up with a personal foul after missing the free throw. Did an amazing job with Tulsa. I really liked that team last year. Less than four remaining in the first half. Coach K talking to Rick Hartzell on the court. So it's Duke by a point. 28-27, 3.51 remaining in the first half. And so far in this one, Illinois with more turnovers, but they've countered that by having a great advantage on the glass so far. Did have dominated the glass better than 2-1 ratio. Against Maryland, they had 55 to Maryland's 37 on a glass. And they wear you down. They physically just wear you down, attacking, attacking on the inside. I think this will be the best Illinois team since the Fly in the Lion Eye in 1989. Now, I know they won the, or shared the Big Ten title three years ago with Hester and Garris on the Lon Kruger, but I like this team way better. Battier leans into McClay. No foul call. Horvath way off the mark on a three pointer. And Bradford pulls it off the backside. Corey Bradford really unable to get in the mix so far. He has one three-pointer. See, now without Boozer on the floor, I'd attack on the inside. That's what Archibald did so well when Boozer was on the bench before. Harrington, a little slip out there. 15 on the shot clock, 3 10 remaining in the half. See, Duke does a great job. They know in a scouting report that Harrington can shoot the three. Nice, nice. backdoor cut and a great pass. As Archibald skipped it down there to Bradford. That was a big time pass by Archibald, the big guy with that bounce pass. Bradford moving without the basketball. And here comes Boozer back on the floor. Danger. He's got two fouls. Illinois' first lead since the opening basket. Foul inside. Watch his backdoor cut and the pass that is perfect. We have found out in a big time environment that Duke really needs Carlos Boozer on the floor. There's that backdoor cut. Great angle. Nobody rotated over. 
The weak side did not see ball you man. That's a no no in the Duke system. You got to see ball you man at both times. Just when we said Corey Bradford hadn't been involved, he picks up his fifth point. On the other end, though, the foul is on Harrington. It sends a leading scorer in the ballgame, Jason Williams, to the free throw line. You know, I mentioned that flying Illini team. They had Kenny Battle on the inside, Lowell Hamilton, Nick Anderson, and they came off the bench with Marcus Liberty and Larry Smith. Ludus Club lost a heartbreaker in the final four. Remember when they lost to Michigan and Sean Higgins with a tip in, and they had spanked them twice during the regular season. And then the Wolverines went on and won the national title. Steve Fisher, he should have retired right then and there. That he should have the retired. Highlight, it? Took over from Bill Frieda, beat my alma mater, seat in the hall. We had a momentary tie, our first one of the game, but Williams' second free throw changed that. Duke back in front by one. Jason has really played well on the perimeter thus far. They got Duhon matched up with Frankie now. Bradford around a pick, runs into Battier. Not exactly what he was looking for. See, right now they're trying to get some screens for Bradford. McLean, strong move inside. He's got muscle. I'll tell you, he does. He looks like he would be one heck of a linebacker. That's right. He really has a presence. And I know you're all excited. Kansas State in Oklahoma. I'll be watching that, baby. We do that big 12 championship. Then you're doing the Orange Bowl. I'm jealous of you. It's a couple of shameless plugs for our sister network, ABC. Well, I got to take care of how it counts. <laughs> but he's not at ABC. Lane, here's the guy we were talking about. Watch this strong move inside. There's Sergio taking the ball. He got a lot quicker this year. Looks like he trimmed down. There he is with that strong drive to the goal. I was teasing him today in the lobby. Jay Billis was laughing. I said, come on, now, there's no way you're 6'4". There's no way. I said, I'm 5'11", 5 5'11", 5 and I'm about two inches bigger than me. He said, yeah, but we got to count my throat. <laughs> <laughs> that never hurts. What great kids. I spent time with them today. He's got a beautiful bunch of kids, Illinois. Steal by Duhon, another turnover against Illinois. The lob underneath the Boozer. Oh, do they need Mr. Boozer? Mr. Boozer better not get number three. He better not get number three. Oh, they need him on the floor. Oh, was that a good look inside on that pass? They can really pass the ball. The one thing about the Duke guards, they love to pass the ball. They're a very unselfish. They have as much fun with that as they do scoring themselves, sometimes more so. And that's why you win when you're unselfish. You share. Like I share the mic with you. That's why we win. There's not a lot of sharing there, but we have a lot of fun. Bradford on the miss. <laughs> and an offensive foul. <laughs> now take a look at this pass right here. Good diagonal look. Uh, what great vision. He knows that if Boozer gets his hands on it, he'll score. He was the MVP in the NIT. Unselfish is the key word. And he's got a Duke. dozen of his own points. Boozer again sits down as Mike Krzyzewski's playing it very smart with him. He doesn't want him to pick up a third foul before halftime. And he's also very smart as we look at the turnover ratio. Better than three to one. 14 for Illinois. You would think they'd be out of the game with that kind of number there. But, but the rebound is helping. Yep. That's right. The rebound is the game down. But Mike knows every time that Illinois gets ahead, he gets Carlos right on the floor. The bench scoring for Illinois, too. They have got 11 to Duke's zero from their bench, and that's been a big help. So you add that to their rebounding, it's kind of counteracted the turnover. And they've also done a great job, Illinois, at controlling Battier. He has not been able to break loose. Just a little over a minute left in the half. Duke by one until that shot goes up and in. Dunleavy tried to get a hand on it. They're going to give credit to Griffin. I think actually it came off Mike's hands more than it did off Marcus. Nice high-low entry right there. They execute really well in their offensive half-court sets. Oh, you got to dive on that loose ball. you got to dive on that loose ball. Williams lost the handle. Never really found it, except it's still going to be Duke basketball with 46 seconds left. So don't forget, coming up, Larry Beals at halftime. Sports Center in game. We'll take a look at the Wake Forest Michigan game that preceded us, Northwestern and Clemson. And Lindros to Toronto. Wow. Is that a possibility. That'll give, you, that'll give you a concussion right there, won't it? Yeah, he worn out his welcome in Philadelphia. 33 32, Duke trailing by one. And all across the country is where Duke goes to find basketball players, including Alaska. 14 different players from 14 different states on the roster this year. So Krzyzewskiville isn't just in. Durham, North Carolina, it's basically all over the country, and that's where all these guys have come from this year. Seven McDonald's All-Americans 
They just keep coming in and uh, making stars out of themselves and then either going out of the NBA or sitting next to Mike coaching one of the two. As we look at Duhan right there. Hey Brad I announced on my website my old Dukey five under Michael Krzyzewski and you should see some of the response I got. They could not believe that I didn't pick for example Mark Heyman and guys like Jeff Mullins. I said under Coach K. Under Coach K. Had Johnny, Jeff, Johnny Daw Dawkins. Oh yeah Johnny Dawkins Johnny and Hurley and Hill and Leitner and Barry. That's pretty good club. And I said. Who's your, who's your first guy off the bench Billis. Well Jay Trajan Langdon and Billis for role okay, players. Good. Now we'll have Billis coach that team. We'll have Billis coach that team. Jay's probably got his own starting five. You had to get somebody in there to set screens. Huh? <laughs> hey you got to share the basketball. But you know what the question I have is will Shane Battier be able to supplant one of those five eventually if you picked an all Duke team under Coach K. I'll tell you what I'll guarantee you one thing. And that is his jersey will be in the rafters eventually. Oh, there's no doubt about it. He represents and epitomizes everything that the NCAA manual speaks about student athletes. Illinois by a point. A half minute left in the half, and Duke has not trailed at halftime this year. Duke's done a great job forcing turnovers, but unfortunately, Illinois won the battle on a glass. Griffin, nice spin over Williams, but he missed the shot. Williams over Williams, I should say, missed the shot. Chris Collins. Chris Foul is going to be out of the Right in front of the dude bench. Chris Collins very animated as you see a smile on. Look at Chris Collins. He's a great outside shooter, too. Look at his dad out in New York and his mom. Very proud of Chris. And Chris got a heck of a future in coaching. His enthusiasm is so contagious. He was telling me before the game, we need a seventh guy to step up. He said we're strong through six, but we need a seventh guy. And that seventh guy, they would love to be an inside presence to help out when Boozer's not in there. And so far, it's not showing up. You know, Chris did a good job with Tommy Amica down at Seton Hall. How's this for a line yesterday in the game? Eddie Griffin there, Diaper Dandy, 26 points, 21 rebounds, and seven block shots. Not bad, huh? For a Diaper Dandy. He was my Diaper Dandy of the week. I pick every Monday on the ESPN.com website. Oh, another tie at 33. So maybe Duke won't trail at halftime. Jason Williams been the leading scorer in the ball game. 13, looking for 14, and got it. I tell you what, I'm shocked and disappointed with tonight, though. But the place is not sold out. You got the number one team in America playing Illinois. We're only fans down here in Carolina. I'm very disappointed, like Mike Tirico said today. I agree with him. Disappointed with the crowd up in Ann Arbor. Bradford baseline. Missed the jumper. Dunleavy up high. They pull it down. And a collision, and whoops, a little uh -oh, shoving uh -oh, going uh -oh, on between Johnson that. and Sanders. And a little finger waving as well. And Sanders and Johnson have at it. And Kyle Hess, Mike Wood step in there immediately to break up that situation. I don't know. I looked at Lucas and I don't want to fight with him. <laughs> no. Especially with that new uh, hairdo. He looks like he's ready for Rick Flair. He told the people in the lobby today, he said, I just want to look like you, Dickie V. I said, what? There was the collision right there or an arm thrown out there. And Jay we get this all straightened out. Brad they've called an intentional foul on Casey Sanders for throwing an elbow. That means two shots in the ball. Wow. And we'll get another look at it. It happened right after the rebound by Dunleavy and OK there it oh, is. Oh yeah there right it hand. is. Oh right. no doubt about it. We have missed that on the initial. I mean the call had to be made right there. So Bradford to the line. Buries the free throw. 73 percent free throw shooter. Mike is very upset but I don't understand why. Does it look like Casey J. What did you think about that. Well there's no question Dick that that was an intentional foul by Casey Sanders. I think Mike Krzyzewski a little bit upset at some of the extracurricular stuff that went on afterwards. But that was the correct call. Two shots in the ball. I think that's what Mike is saying Jay exactly is how about what uh, Johnson did after the fact. At any rate Illinois regained the lead by a point and here they are with the ball on the baseline. Williams to inbound to Johnson. Johnson lost the handle. Williams throws it up there doesn't go in and it will be Illinois leading at halftime. ACC Big Ten Challenge as the ACC's won a couple tonight. Wake Forest and Clemson already winners. Mike Krzyzewski having a word with Carl Hess and Bill Self is there to listen. He didn't like the last call, the intentional foul. The free throws both went in for Bradford. The possession didn't hurt, but for the first time all year, the top-ranked team in the country is trailing at halftime 35-34, and the leading coach is with Jay Billis.
Bill, your team played hard on both ends, very well defensively and on the glass. Was it all turnovers that it came down to for you guys? Well, I think they had 14 points off uh, uncontested layups, so we did a much better job the second 10 minutes of taking care of the ball. And if we were just patient, we were able to drive the ball at them a little bit. And our big guys played pretty well. What do you say to them at halftime? Well, the game's only half over. We, you know, we didn't, we didn't come here to play a good first half, and so we have to come out focused. I really felt like they, they controlled us the first five, seven minutes, and, and then we withstood their little rush, but uh, we got to play a full 20 minutes this half. Bill, thanks. Good luck in the second half. Brad, back to you. All right, guys, halftime it is. Illinois leading Duke 35-34. Larry Beal and Sports Center in games. Halftime report is next. Larry. Hey, thanks, Brad. It's a whole different game when Carlos Boozer is on the bench for Duke. Sports Center in game is coming up next. Tell you why Utah head coach Rick Majerus will not be on the sidelines for the Utes, maybe until New Year's Day. Plus, other action from the ACC Big Ten Challenge. Can Wake Forest stay unbeaten, or do they get a wake up call from Michigan? The halftime report is coming up next. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the ACC Big Ten Challenge is presented by 989 Sports, only on PlayStation. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports is brought to you by Nike Shocks. Boing, thoroughly experienced and explained on Nike.com. Bit of a strange position for the top ranked team in the country. They trail at halftime 35 34 with Jay Billis and Nick Vitale. I'm Brad Nestor. Welcome back to Greensboro. You know, Duke was trying to find a way to get physical with Il the Illinois, but uh, not the way they did it there in the last seconds of the first half. Yeah, that was an intentional personal. That's why they kept the basketball and got two shots in that situation with Casey Sanders. At the end of the game there, we watched the play. As you take a look right here. There's Sanders, number 20. See, there it is, the intentional shot. The ref right on the play. Look at Mike. Mike says, well, what about Lucas? What about Lucas? What about Lucas? Look at that fight around that sideline. But the key, I thought, in the half, when you look at the numbers, you look at the stats right here, the rebound totals, better than two to one margin for Illinois. And we sort of expected that, Brad. And then on the other side, we expected this, Illinois to turn the ball over. And the difference which has negated the turnovers has been their rebounding success. It's made it pretty even. And the points off turnovers, Duke's favor. And Jay, I know you've been in a lot of locker rooms. I'm sure you know what went on in there and Duke's uh, side anyway. Well, in the Duke rock locker room, it was a pretty intense scene. Coach K was challenging every one of the players, especially Carlos Boozer to get on the glass. He felt that they were just out toughed on the boards, beaten 24 to 10. Somebody's got to step forward and get a rebound. And then at the end of the half, what Mike Krzyzewski was most upset about, he thought that Lucas Johnson got involved as well into that little fracas, but he was a little bit upset at the officials. They walked to the wrong end of the court to administer the free throws. He wanted to know why. <laughs> I'll tell you, Every Jay, detail. Jay, you and I talked about Duke having to get a lot stronger on the interior, and here's a perfect example tonight. Here's Bradford. Nice dish. Block shot, though, as Boozer came up, stuck Griffin. That was a good look by Corey Bradford. We're going to take a look at the kickoff by Bradford. And we're going to see the block by Boozer coming from the rear. Good deflection. A kid that's got a breakout, has got a world of potential, is Brian Cook. He's been silent in this game. He sure has. Battier's been kind of quiet, too, since early. And they really controlled him. Hell of a six points. This guy hasn't been quiet. Jason Williams has been sensational. Leading score with 14 is Williams. There's help on Battier as Williams puts a hand out there. And a foul from behind on McLean, so he gets back to back personals. I think Shane Battier's got to take advantage of his ability to post up as well as Drift to shoot the perimeter shot. I think when he's posted up and he gets balanced to his game, he's much more effective. Dunleavy around a pick on the inbounds, missed the jumper, but underneath, cleaning up is Nate James. Well, I'll tell you, James must have been challenged. I'll tell you, at six, five and a half, he gives you everything he has. Duke back in front by one. Here's an offensive foul on Frank Williams. So Duke starting out in the first minute playing some defense. Is that crowd alive here? Not sold out today. Kind of a disappointment when you think of the number one team in America. 
As we watch right here, there's the offensive out. Good defensive play by Jason Williams. It's called drive him, beat him, and turn him. Beat him to the spot. Move not, those feet. Not a sold out crowd, but there's probably 16,000 in here. We don't want to make it sound like right, nobody's right, watching the right. game. Dunleavy had it blocked by Cook. Dunleavy really trying to be aggressive on the offensive end. Good. Don't let him no more. You can see the kickstart that Mike Krzyzewski gave his team in the locker room that Jay was talking about. James has it squatted out of there. And here comes McLean on the break and a foul on Williams. Now Jason Williams, Michael Wood right on the call. I got a feeling we're going to hear a lot about both these teams. And I don't think you have to go to Harvard to figure that out <laughs> in postseason time. This is only November, so we know both these clubs are going to get better and better and better. Ryan Cook swatted that last one out of there. Yeah, he's the guy that's got so much ability. 6-11. His dad was a first-round draft choice himself. Great position by Griffin and a foul on Boozer, and that uh -oh. puts Duke in some uh -oh. trouble. Big time trouble, Brown. Right down the score in the time that happened. 18-42, 37-36, and Boozer has three. Well, that was a perfect pass, but great position by Griffin. He just held his ground and then backed away to the hoop. Yeah, Griffin gets a great angle on the inside. Abusa could have been called for a mugging foul right there. I mean, he could have been called for a mugging foul before he made contact on the shot. Chance for a three-point play from Marcus Griffin. It rattles out. It's tipped in, though, underneath by McLean. I tell you, McLean, and when we throw hit a Bruce Brothers on the inside, McLean <laughs> and Griffin and company. Very aggressive. Illinois' biggest lead of the ball game. They're up three. See, Mike has a tough time now. He can't take him out of the game. He's got nobody to go to. Battier, nice drive, strong move. Griffin hammered it. Unless he ran over and put a uniform on our guy, Jay Billis. <laughs> Jay, Jay, you got any eligibility? All I got are five fouls to give up, but I'd give up <laughs> quick in this one. That's Sergio McLean. Look at him attacking the glass. He's a warrior. He's just a tough kid. <laughs> So Battier will go to the free throw line. Two three pointers is all Shane's got to show for his efforts tonight. You know, when you think of McLean and we think of Williams and we think of Griffin, winning four state championships in a row. That's, That's incredible, especially in a state like Illinois in Class A. I mean, that is unbelievable. Peoria Manuel, Manuel High School. Battier, eight points now, two rebounds. He's from McLean High School, Detroit Country Day, produced Mr. Weber, who's having a phenomenal year in Sacramento. Battier will end up with 20 tonight before it's over. Oh, yeah, he no. says he's quiet, but it won't last forever. And foul on Jason Williams. That was close. Frank Williams threw a little elbow. See, that's the rule that's been put in this year, a point of emphasis. We're not going to allow any kind of contact, and Jason has to be aware of that. Those two both given and taken a little bit. Here's another look. You see the little bump with the elbow? Oh, I don't know about that. Uh, I don't know about that. Little ticky tack. Wow, real tick tack. Go, go. Illinois by one. Here's a backdoor cut. Collision underneath. Cook misses in close. I mean, they're whipping Duke's butt on the glass. They are whipping Duke's butt on the glass. They are whipping Duke's butt on the glass. There is no doubt about it, and Coach K knows it. Three-point Illinois lead. Williams trying to change it. Good drive, but couldn't finish. Look out on photography row. Sergio McLean comes flying out of there. See, Mike Krzyzewski can take one thing. He can take a team losing, but he can't take a team being outscrapped and outclawed on the glass. And right now, Illinois is just outclassing them on the glass, out hustling them on the glass. Finally made it count with McLean's bucket off that glass. It's a three-point lead again for the Illini. But the one weapon Duke has is that three, and they can get back quickly. Williams missed one. Dunleavy trying to go up strong, and I think they're going to call a hooking foul on Bradford underneath. And that is going to be the call, and Corey picks up his second. Don't forget, coming up Saturday, a couple great games on ESPN at noon. DePaul and Florida. Dick will be there. And then Duke and Temple rematch. They just played last week. they got to go at it again. Jay Billis will be at that game as well. Mr. Dunleavy, and we talk about the three-point shot. Dunleavy's got 10. That was a two-pointer just inside the line. Williams all the way down. Cook brings it back out. McLean had a notion. Would rather drive and dish. Pass. Cook tried to drop step and almost broke his own ankle. Yeah, he put the ball, should have taken it right to the basket. Good defensive adjustment by Duke. I'll be down here for that, for that game on Saturday with the ball in Florida down at Gainesville. Hey, Billy Donovan, hey, in fact, Billy Donovan's hey, Florida team has something in common with both these teams. They knocked him out of the tournament That's last right. year. Both these clubs. Look at the turnovers. Four to one ratio. 
Illinois beaten by Florida 93 76 in the second round here in North Carolina Winston-Salem double dribble that is a 17th now turnover against Illinois or rather Duke with the turnover and that's their fifth the only five turnovers you will take that any day of the week in the turnover margin Duke forced 18 a game last year. And they'll have more than that forced against Illinois before this one's over. And there goes another one. That's an unforced error. And that's now a, it is 17 turnovers. That's a matter, matter of rhythm and timing, getting really familiar with Bill Self's system. Remember, this guy's put in a new system right. we're in November. I mean, people got to realize we're in November. They're pretty good now. They'll be really good in March. Right, yeah, when they get a feel for each other. Nice move by Batty. He got his man in the air and feeds Dunleavy on the baseline. There's no substitute for shooting the basketball. I'll tell you, Mike Dunleavy has really stepped up offensively here in the second half. Looking for his shot. That's his fifth attempt. Tenth lead change. Dunleavy with a defensive play. And now Duke's going to the floor, strapping, and they force another turnover. See, that's Duke basketball. That's Duke basketball. Hustle, scrap, dive, battle. That's, and that's why. 80% of the people in this building are standing up right now. And that's what the Cameron Crazies love. They love to see the hustle and scrap. There goes the All-American. There goes the Rolls Royce guy. There goes the magazine cover guy. Shane Battier diving on the floor. Williams missed with a left hand, but it cleaned up by Boozer. Yes, sir. Carlos Boozer inside. I'll tell you, Mr. Nussler, the Dukies are alive. Duke by three now. Illinois led by three on two occasions this half. And a whistle and a foul on Nate James. And Nate's got three. That foul trouble can become big for Duke. Duke not a very deep bench. James and Boozer with three each. Every possession, I would go inside to Griffin and attack Boozer. I would attack Boozer with every possession I can. Try to get that four. Play needs some help right now. Sometimes the kids, there, there it is. is. Entry pass to Griffin. Dunleavy tries to help. They're still going to get a chance for a three-point play now. Is it on Dunleavy or Boozer? It's a big ball. Were they making? I couldn't see from this angle. Dunleavy. See, I'd go inside to Marcus Griffin. Marcus the man. That was smart by Dunleavy to at least try to help out and make sure the foul wasn't on Boozer. As you see the slap right there. Yeah, there's the slap reaching in. Boozer just was really playing Matador defense. Basically, has no other choice. He wants to stay on the floor. He's coming off the floor, and Sanders is coming in for him. See, Sanders got to really step it up. He has got to give them positive minutes. They say he's improved a great deal in practice, and he's got to start to do it in game situations. They really need his presence. Marcus Griffin now, the senior. Three-point play. Got it to tie the game up. And we're dead even with 15-55 remaining in the ball game. Michael Dunleavy, Brad, has been really looking for that J, baby. There he is. Good rotation. Nothing but nothing. We are all tied at 44 in this second annual ACC Big Ten Challenge. I am flanked by the two commissioners of the respective conferences. Let's go in alphabetical order. We'll start with John Swafford of the ACC. John, you've taken a break a little bit from the BCS that you have been monitoring so closely. Uh, how are you enjoying the basketball? And, and what does this challenge mean to both these leagues? Jay, I, I just think it adds a lot of spice to the early, early season in basketball. It's a great way to sort of kick things off, get things started. And it's two conferences that historically have the most wins in NCAA tournament play, so I think that's certainly fitting. Does it uh, make it a little easier to watch this game knowing that you're up 2-0 with, uh, with Clemson and Wake Forest winning earlier? Well, it does, but there are a lot of games yet to be played both tonight and tomorrow night, and, you know, year in and year out, I think you'll find the competition between these two leagues very, very even. Well, let's turn now to Jim Delaney, the commissioner of the Big Ten. Jim, you are a basketball man. What, what is this uh, challenge or tournament uh, mean for the respective conferences as far as which is better can you tell anything well I think I, I think it's a players and fans event I think the players love to challenge the best I think the ACC and the Big Ten have been the best over the years and um, I think the players really look forward to playing and um, we're down 2-0 well, last year we were down uh, we struggled a little bit on the first night but we came back in the second night so uh, this is a terrific game here and um, I think we have a lot of basketball yet to be played tonight. That is true. A lot of basketball left to be played. Back to you, Brad. 
And of course, when Jay said we'll go alphabetically, he meant the ACC instead of Big Ten. He didn't mean Swafford instead of Delaney. I wanted to straighten that out for all the Duke people that were watching, the ac academic people. I know. I was yeah. a little confused there. Yeah, Jay's got 1,400 on his <laughs> Duhon missed a slam, or Duke would be up by five. Michael Dunleavy. left. Yeah, during that interview, Dunleavy made a jump shot, and there's Duhon missing that jam, as you just said, Brad. Inbounds. Here's Williams on a fadeaway three. His first of the night. One thing he's doing tonight is he's not trying to force the action. Shots aren't not available, at all. and he's really not trying to take sh bad shots. And that's the key to being a successful guard, understanding what a quality shot is. So we're dead even again at 47. Jason Williams for a three. Battier trying to tip it in. It almost went McLean to clear off the rebound. McLean has been doing yeoman's work for a guy that's only 6'4", or as Dick said, maybe less than that. I'll tell you, he's a warrior. They changed defenses. They went to their zone defense. A little matchup right now. That's McLean's 10th rebound. Bounce pass on the back door. Bradford could never find his feet. He slipped a little bit on his move around Duhon and never found his footing. And they turn it over again. We have not seen the real Corey Bradford early in the season. I think one of the reasons for that, Brad, he had surgery on that knee after he played on a USA select team against the Olympians. Played and with I, Batty and Jason Williams. Yes, sir. And I really believe he doesn't have his explosiveness yet. He looks like he's not laboring, but I don't see that explosiveness I saw last year. This foul's going to be on Sergio McLean, and that will be three on McLean all this half. He's a winner. I'll tell you one thing about Sergio McLean. He's just a fierce competitor and a winner. We're going to have some big moments up in Champaign this year. I don't know like Michigan State confrontation will be big. Oh, I guess. I can't wait to see Bell tomorrow night against Joseph Forte. Bell, one of the great defender, defensive players in America. Griffin now gets his third foul. As he pushes Boozer from behind. Oh, one on one on one situation now. That's the point of emphasis. They said they're going to clean it up. They're not going to allow that contact on the interior. And the officials need it. And the players got to be aware of that. They got to understand what the official is going to call. You got to know the official. got to do a scouting report on them. Now look at Boozer trying to post up inside. Now he and Griffin going to ba battle. Well, then you, you can't put your hands on his back. You just can't do that. Now, maybe five years ago, you could get away with that. <laughs> WrestleMania. A little Ric Flair a little bit there. And Boozer, six points on the night. Very stoic bench. Look at that bench right now. Real concern. A lot of intensity. Well, they should be concerned. They're only up a point. A long way to go and some little bit of foul trouble mixed in there. Boozer misses a second and Archibald who did such a great job off the bench in the first half. He his body up there for a nice screen for Frankie Williams. Bradford quick three. Got it. And that's what they want to do. Great decision again by Frankie Williams. Giving up the rock at the right time. Well, this he's, is not the same guy, is it? Oh, he's a much improved player. Absolutely a different player. Williams weak. Got it. Seam in the defense, hanging in the air. First team freshman All American from last year, and as Dick would say, a super soft this year. Oh, he is a super soft. Look at that body control. Look at that agility. Look at that unbelievable English on the glass. Now take a look at Frank Williams. Here's the decisions. I'm going to my buddy. Come on, Corey. Find that J, Corey. Find that J. He found it. Playing very, very well. The battle of the Williams guards. See, you can win if you got great guard play. And you look at these clubs, you throw in Arizona with certainly Arenas and with Gardner. You throw in Kansas with Heinrich and Boshi. You have good guards. You got a chance to win. Williams misses a chance for the three-point play. That's about the only thing he's done wrong tonight. I can't wait to see North Carolina point guard by committee tomorrow. That's one area they got a solve for point guard play. Tied at 50. Sixth tie of the night. Papai is posted up strong inside against Matty A. Has very limited practice time because he had a knee surgery. We haven't had to worry about the shot clock all night, have we? Oh, not really. Jason Williams off Bradford's miss. He's a big timer, I'll tell you. There's just a certain style of bounce to his game. Duhon from way out. Rebound, Bradford trying to get it ahead. There's a two-on-one. Williams gives it up to Kupai oh. underneath. He missed, but he's going to go. Another, to line. another great decision by Frankie Williams. Last year, you and I would have seen him out of control. He made a great decision giving up the ball to Kupai. Take a look right now.
right here. Two on one break. Last year he would have been out of control, flying to the glass. Here he is with a little dump down. Frankie Williams. He's headed to be my most improved player of the year the way he's playing. Fourth on eight, James, too, with that foul. Andrew Bowyer, born in Sarajevo, going to the free throw line. It'll be a big loss to lose Nate James to that sideline. I think if you can get it to Duke's bench, you got a great shot against them, and right now they're getting it to Duke's bench. Boozer with three and James with four, and Dunleavy's back in. He's not in foul trouble. See, that's the one area they can rotate another player. You can take James and bring a Dunleavy. And that gives them, you know, balance on a perimeter. It's inside. They don't have enough help. Well, Dunleavy can play any spot except losers. It's the one that he can't play. Rupaya missed both free throws. And we remain tied at 50. With 12.45 remaining in the ball game. Brad Nestler, Dick Vitale, Jay Gillis, the Greensboro Coliseum. It's the ACC Big Ten Challenge. ACC try to pull a sweep of the Knights. The last time we heard Georgia Tech was trailing Iowa close to halftime by six. The other two wins tonight went to Wake Forest and Clemson over Michigan and Northwestern, respectively. And yeah, Steve Wolford doing a great job of Iowa. One of that new breed of coaches along with Quinn Snyder, Tommy Yamaka, Matt Doherty, all those new guys really bringing their enthusiasm and spirit. Hey, just think about it. Elton Brand could be a senior. Put him on a front yeah. court right now with the batty <laughs> class. I mean, are you Corey kidding Corey could be here. Oh, you could, wow. William Avery could be here, right? Boozer. William Avery, William Avery and Corey McGetty should be here. That's true. They should be here because they weren't ready for the NBA, and they're still not ready for the NBA. Elton Brand, that's a different case. There's a look at Johnny Dawkins and Wojciechowski with Coach K in the middle of his two guards. Burgess could be here, too. He transferred. Yeah, he's playing for Utah, coming off the bench right now. They got beat by Georgia, I believe, up in the tournament. Yes, they do. And uh, we miss Rick Majerus. Rick will be out at least until January. Rick, we wish you the best in your recovery. You we want to wish Pete Carrill a good recovery, oh, yeah. too. Yeah, heart, heart surgery. surgery today. Coach, we know uh, yeah. you're a little under the weather. Hope that's going to straighten things out for you. Beautiful man. Williams stepped on the baseline. Trying to get the pass outside, and that is turnover number 21. When you talk about 21 turnovers with 12 and a half minutes to play, you'd think a team would be down by about 30 points, but yeah, they're not. You would think they'd be blown out, especially against Duke, who really makes you pay with the turnover. But it's the presence of their interior game that's kept them even. Battier, three. What a weapon! What a weapon! Anytime you got a six niner who can step out there and drive down that three. Oh, that gives you Uncle Bo. Uncle Bo, momentum's on their side. The Duke East got momentum. Duke's biggest lead of the second half. And the Greensboro Coliseum ignites, as does the Duke bench. They lead 55-50. 12-13 remaining in the ball game, and they like to take the threes. They like to hit the threes. They take about 24 a game. Mike Krzyzewski says, it does not bother me at all. I'm comfortable with the amount of threes. Uh, you know, we've won a lot of games. Uh, if I have people taking threes who can't hit them, then I'd be uncomfortable. But uh, uh, that's a strength of our team, and uh, like man-to-man -man defense and anything else. I mean, if we lose because we take threes and miss, it doesn't mean you would change the personality of your team. I think each coach should try to figure out what's best for his team. Last year, they hit 284, the second most in school history. Battier has three tonight, which has given Duke a five-point advantage. I thought last year they got a little fatigued at the end of the year. When you looked at all the minutes those guards played, especially Jason Williams, plus to a really good Florida team, the Gators. I think they'll be outstanding again this year in the SEC. No doubt about it. They'll be fun to watch. Tennessee looks like they're going to be strong. Very balanced Tennessee team. Whoops. Williams just slipped. And Duhon with a steal. Had it swatted out of there by Johnson. Nice defense by Johnson. I tell you, he's a tenacious player. You talk about Lucas Johnson. He's just one of those guys diving and hustling. Griffin on a turnaround miss. Dunleavy clears it out. He's looking down court. Scoop pass Duhon. Now Williams. Williams pulls up off the glass. I'll tell you, they are showtime in transition. They look for each other. They fill the lane so well. Look at Coach K. Is he fired up? Does he want 504? He doesn't care about 503. He wants 504. McClay trying to quiet the crowd. Griffin. That's oh, going to be the goaltender. Yes, sir. Interference up there on the glass. 
Mike Krzyzewski almost put a uniform on there just for a second with 11-13 remaining. Look at him. Look at, him. <laughs> Look at the emotion. It's so great to see that enthusiasm, that emotion. Larry Beal in the studio. Iowa and Georgia Tech over on ESPN2 for the Hawkeyes. Brody Boyd will miss the jumper. Courtney Scott, rebound, put back. Steve offers Hawkeyes up seven at the half, 40 to 33. And so far tonight, the ACC's done very well with Wake and Clemson winners. But Georgia Tech, as Larry said, on the short end by seven at the break here. It is Duke leading by five with. 11-13 remaining in the ballgame. You know, it's really great seeing Luke Recker back in the uniform after that layoff. Seeing him play for the Iowa Hawkeyes now under Steve Alford. Half-court trap. Now they're going to go to a zone. Something they haven't shown. They got Lucas Johnson up on the top of the zone to bother the perimeter shooters. See, they want the size and the long arms to bother the perimeter shooters. Inside they go to Boozer. Nice pass by Dunleavy, but Boozer misses the left hand turnaround. Boozer did a super job finding the opening to seam in that zone. They got him the ball, but he didn't convert. Go inside, attack Boozer. He will not guard him. Attack him inside. He doesn't want the fourth foul. Throw it in There's there. The pass, a double team by Battier trying to help out and does a nice job of it. Got to reverse the ball out of that double up and find the open man. And another turnover. Williams with a steal. Takes it in. His 20th point with some authority. Some people say, how can you say that with Shane Batty out there? But tonight, he is the best player on the floor. Harrington. They got a whistle and a foul. Foul, I think, is going to be called on Duhon. There he is, stepping in the passing lane, makes it a defensive pass. And here he is with the finish. The conversion, great Boy, lift. I didn't know he was going to throw it down when he went up there. Oh, look at that one-handed jam. Oh, is he big time. The points off turnovers has been huge in Duke's advantage tonight from the get-go of this game, really. One thing they've done a great job, Duke defensively, is not allow Harrington to get looks at the basket. They know that he's a tremendous long-range three-point shooter. He's made 10 of his last 14. He has not been able to get one off here tonight. It's only his third free throw of the year. And he's a great free throw shooter coming into the season. Sean had hit 18 straight free throws. Two out of three now in the season. I can see why with that stroke he has. And they were down big time. They were down big time against Arizona. And he knocked down five trifectas. Five for nine in that game. Played for his dad, Jim, in high school. And usually guys that are the sons of coaches don't miss free throws. And he did. He hit them both. It's a five-point game midway second half. Yeah, the reason they don't miss it is because the father would have him in a gym all day. <laughs> That's right. Shooting and shooting and shooting. He's got a key to the gym. Yes, sir. Five-point Duke advantage. Nice crossover by Dunleavy, and he's bumped by Harrington, and the ball goes in, but it's going to be no basket. They wave that off. Coming up on Sports Center, Rich Eisen, Brian Kenny will be along. Question of the night is the ACC the best? Pacers and Lakers NBA Finals rematch. There's some talk of some NHL trade possibilities. They'll have all that and more coming up at Sports Center following our game, which is 9:40 remaining. Now you see the Pacers playing the Lakers. The one thing with the Pacers, they got so many young kids. As he comes up empty on a free throw with guys like Bender and Harrington, who I really believe should have been in college, getting some experience. See, kids don't understand what you get by playing in college. You learn familiarity in terms of how to play the game, in terms of five-on-five -five competition. A six-point Duke lead with nine and a half to go. It's Harrington, McLean, Griffin, Williams. Bradford on the floor and another foul on Duhon. Yeah, Duhon grabbed him right there. I would go inside to Griffin a little bit more. I think they've gotten away from him. What do you think of that, Jay? They're not going inside to Marcus Griffin enough. Well, they at least need to get him some touches so it'll collapse the defense a little bit. But when they did throw it in, Shane Battier did a pretty nice job the last time of coming over and double teaming him and making him give up the ball. And I tell you, Dick, I got to agree with your statement on Jason Williams. 
His feel for the game right now is just so good. It seems like whenever Duke needs something, he gives it to him, puts him on his back, and just carries the team. Well, he did that when they were down by six with three minutes and 22 seconds on the clock, and I believe everybody thought they were dead, and he carried them against Temple, Jay. He was sensational in the ACC tournament last year, and he has come out from the get-go tonight and just said, okay, the challenge is on. It's Williams against Williams. I may not win it, but I'm sure going to be near the front and he's been near the front the whole game his counterpart Frank Williams hits both free throws look at that pass got to catch that yeah. got to catch that's that that's a good pass that Nate James turnover yeah Nate, didn't Nate knows that it too pass. great vision Nate just didn't see it wasn't ready you can see right there look at a great vision you just lost contact catch it with your eyes as well as your hands four point game I expected to break out today and really be tough with Brian Cook, and he's really been he's not been a quiet. No, he hasn't had a point. He's on a bench right now, 6'11 with a lot of ability. And a pass and a foul from behind on Williams. See, mental toughness, and that's the one thing Bill Self wants to find out about his people. They showed that toughness and holding on, beating, as you look at Cook right here, a kid with a world of talent. They held on against Maryland, and they showed that toughness when they were down big against Arizona. Yeah, they were down 15 back. with three yes, and a half to play, so you don't ever want to count these guys out. And they had a shot at the end, but the shot was blocked. 11 for Frank. Now 12. He's hit all five of his free throws. Steve Bartle, who I respect, who was doing the radio here, was an outstanding point guard on the flight of Illini, and he spoke highly of Frank Williams and his decision-making, and also, he really feels that this club has a chance to be a special team, and I agree with him. I don't care what happens here tonight. I believe this team in January and February, Illinois is going to be a special, special team. Back to within two come the Alana. That's they, why they're fighting, Alana. They don't go away, do they? No, they don't go away. Williams bounces inside the Boozer, stolen away by Frank Lee. Quick hands. I'll tell you, he's got quick hands. Williams outside for the lead is Harrington. Oh! Oh, can he shoot the rock? I mean, he, I don't know how that one went down. I don't know how that Line drive. Down. Line drive, baby. Duke was up 7, 59-52. Illinois now leads. Williams try to change it. Rebound Griffin. Are they mentally tough? Are they physically tough? Are they emotionally tough? You better believe the answer is yes. You think those gassers they ran early aren't helping? They don't even look like they're tired. You see Frank Williams, he looked for Harrington. He knew he wanted to get him a shot because he can shoot the rock. Here's Harrington, Dunley Viana. Open is McLean. Got it. He can make that medium range jump shot. They may need a T.O., baby. The Dukies may need a T.O. run. They take one. Only second time out taken by Mike Krzyzewski and now Illinois excited. I tell you, Frank, look at her little doll. She reminds me of a little daughter. When your daughter was that age, have blood here. She's the not that looks. size anymore. I know that. How quickly they grow up. Now watch right here. Look at the steal by Williams. Look at Williams coming over. There's Williams. He picks his pocket and then keeps his head up. And now look at him right here. He wants to go to the three-point shooter. So he finds Harrington. There's Harrington wide open in the corner. He finds a way to knock it down. And then Sergio McLean with the 15-foot little jump shot. Squares his body. Good rotation. Jay, they're not going away at all. Well, they're not going away, Brad, and I think they take the toughness that you and Dick have been talking about from their coach, Bill Self. Bill Self had a chance to watch him at Tulsa. I think he's an outstanding coach. He learned the game under Larry Brown. His father, grandfather were coaches, and I think he is going to be an absolute star in the coaching ranks. He's put these guys in a position to be successful. He runs some really nice stuff. And I'll tell you what, he's really got them playing confidently and together. I'll tell you, Jay, he knows when to be tough, and yet the players today, all of them, told me how much they love playing for him. An 11 to 1 run. He's got to love that part of the game. And a timeout with 7.42 to go. Eighth ranked Illinois leading top ranked Duke by three. Don't go away, folks. Illinois was down 57 to 50. Now they lead by three. That's their biggest advantage of the night with 742 to go. And they've done it by doubling Duke on the glass. And even though they've had a ton of turnovers, it really hasn't mattered. Their bench has done a nice job. And that last 241 was all theirs. 
I'll tell you, that rebound in total is really impressive. And when you throw that on with 55 versus 37 against Maryland, you can see they're a legit big-time rebounding team. Nate James hits a three. And that is their weapon, as Mike Krzyzewski was telling you. He said, hey, we look to shoot the three. That's one of our strengths. Nate James is sixth three-pointer of the year is all, but that was a huge shot, and we're tied again. I'll tell you, that makes up for a lot of errors. When you got guys that can knock down to three, that really hides a lot of the flaws in your team. Shit ever. Pass almost another turnover by Illinois. The last touch by Duke, so Frank Williams will inbound. He's got Archibald, McLean, Bradford, and Harrington with him. He's going to take this one himself. Frank Williams under control. Last year, totally out of control. What a difference a year makes, as that song says, baby. I tell you, I don't think there's any doubt that these are two of the five best teams in America. They're sure playing like it right now. Through a double team goes Williams, and I think Archibald's going to get the foul. And if it is, that's five on Archibald, and that would take a big part of Bill Self's bench away. Yeah, he did such an outstanding job, especially in that first half. To the size, late screens, being aggressive. Came off the bench and was so productive. Robert Archibald. And he's gone. See, they have fouls to give. They got guys like Brian Cook who they can rotate on the floor. That's not the luxury that Mike Krzyzewski possesses. Well, they better get one of those guys off the bench unless he's in that huddle already. Because Archibald's gone, even though he's still part of the huddle. Frank Williams, who's made good decisions all night, made a pretty good decision to call his own number here after the inbounds pass came into Archibald, who gave it right back to him on the baseline. Yeah, the most dangerous guy is the guy that throws the ball inbounds, Jay Billis. That guy is usually very dangerous and usually is open. Well, Frank Williams has just done a phenomenal job all game long, and he's got a little bit of an old-school game. He really liked the hesitation moves that he uses, and he can really get his own shot anytime he wants. But how about the, the job coaching that Bill Self did just there? He had a minute to get a substitute in, but brought his team over to his bench and used that period as a timeout. That was a smart move. Yeah, it was. Yeah, he's really got a lot going for him. There's no doubt I agree with you, Jay. He's one of the real future stars in the coaching fraternity. Well, we talked about the two Williams to start things off, but how about the show they've put on so far as 16 points for Frank Williams, 21 for Jason Williams. Keep it clean right here. Boozer, the big fella, has checked back in. I'll tell you, both Williams have shown why they're two of the real premier point guards in college hoops. 22. They're really like what I call lead guards. I define them the ability to score as well as distribute the basketball. Jason Williams closing in on his career high. He's got a season high right now, matching his jersey number. So you don't want to tie this guy up. I thought last year he felt a little tied up. Right now he feels like he has the freedom to take shots. There's a block shot by Jason Williams. Jason said, not that time, Frank. You're getting too much air time now. Desler and Vital are talking about you too much. Offensively wanted to get a pass down to Duhon on the baseline. Look at the matchup. They got Sergio McLean playing Jason Williams. Boozer hooked an elbow a little bit, got the turnaround. He's effective on the inside. Has not been thus far tonight. Looks a little bit sluggish tonight, but right there, he can really make things happen in the post. Duke back in front by one. We got a good one. back and forth. Oh, we got a good one. This is a big timer just like we anticipated. College troops, baby. If you lose here, it doesn't eliminate you for a championship. McLean against Boozer almost got it. Boozer will pull down the miss. Got to give McLean credit. He goes in against the tall timber and never gives an inch. But he couldn't quite get it off the glass. Jason likes to look for Carlos down the stretch. And McLean steals it. Bradford all the way. Left hand. Intensity out there, the electricity. This is a basketball NCAA environment. You can wow. feel everybody get up on their feet. Wow, people With are standing. 5.25 left. It's 67 61. It's been tied several times. The lead has changed a number of times in the second half. Nobody's gotten out of sight of the other. Illinois is led by three. Duke is led by seven. It's Duke by one right now with 5.10 to go. They can't believe he didn't get Dunleavy call for a foul. Duhon wide open triple. Another rebound by Illinois. Boy, they just clean up on the glass. They give you one shot. They give you one shot. That's it. You better make it count. 
We got a timeout taken by Illinois. I got a feeling tomorrow night it's going to be the same kind of situation that are at Michigan State when the Tar Heels come to town. Sports Center is about five minutes away. Rich and Brian are standing by. We'll talk about the ACC Big Ten Challenge. They'll have a lot of NBA and NHL news for you. It's all coming up on Sports Center following our game. You know, I was mentioned a little bit earlier, as you can take a look right here at the matchup with the Williams. College football, you have a bad loss. It's over for you. But right here, as we take a look at Jason, look at him right here, pulling up with that medium range jump shot. Then we watch him in transition. Up, up, and away, jam. Jamming Jason. That is the matchup we talked about coming into the game. And look what they've done. Yeah, they both have really starred all night long. They've lived up to their billing. Look at the turnover stuff. Look at those turnovers. We'll hide that right now. We'll hide that, our Frank. We won't show those eight. We won't show those eight. He's done too many other good things. Your telestrator would have been working. You could have crossed oh, yeah. that out. <laughs> so Bradford and Johnson, Williams, Harrington, and Cook on the floor for the Illini as they trail by one. Johnson, nice speed inside and a push by Boozer. That's four. Yes, sir. A four on the interior going to the inside. It's so great with what we have here with the ACC Big Ten challenge because we look at Coach Krzyzewski, you find a lot about your club, you find strengths, weaknesses. In fact, if I had to pick up my cupcake schedules this year, hey, my guy, Alabama, I mean, I love Mark Godfrey doing a great job. But Troy State, Arkansas, Pine Bluff, Bramley, Watford, North Texas, Alabama State, Southeast Louisiana. What are you trying to say? Cupcake City Award this year goes to Alabama, Mr. Godfrey. Maybe you can find him a football coach while you're talking about Ooh, it. What about North Carolina? What happened here? Frank Bieber. Wow. That's the second time in basketball that happened with Roy Williams. I'll tell you one thing, at least they sent a message loud and clear and positive out of that. They want football to succeed. Yeah. Hook missed both. Battier for three. Nice rebound by Boozer. Oh, that's a big time rebound. Carlos Boozer wanted that. Chris Duhan says, I love it, Carlos. He really went after that, especially with four fouls, man. And Duke by three. Chance for a three point play. We're going to watch Carlos Boozer working on the offensive boards. Very rare tonight for them to come up with an offensive rebound, but he does that time. Catches the Illini flat footed. A little celebration. Carlos' whole family looking on. Yeah, there's the whole family. Mom, Dad, everybody. And his fiance is just out of the picture. Cindy's over there on the side. They missed the most important part there. They moved here to North Carolina and they moved from Alaska. That's right. There's there she the is. Fiance. Oh, there she is. There she is. That's my guy. That's my guy, Carlos. Cindy says, that's my guy. Look at Johnny Dawkins walking over, doing a little coaching. Duke by four. Johnny says, I like what you did right there, Carlos. Give me five. There's a lot of hoops left here. We're getting down to winning time right now. Now you separate the men. Right now, from the little boys. Men want the rock in their hands late in the game. Sports, this guy wants it. Sports Center follows our game. Williams against Williams. They've been battling all night long. Duke in the midst of a 10-3 run to lead by three. Just trying to hold their number one ranking. Well, they've got to meet Temple again this week. Frank Williams, a little indecision, got caught in midair and pulled up short. Now patience and shot selection become so big. Hey, you're Illinois. What about playing Maryland, UNLV, Arizona, Duke? No cupcakes in there. Here's a steal. Johnson, look, look out. I tell you, he goes to the basket with an abandonment that's unbelievable. He's, he is really a runaway freight train when he attacks the glass. Here comes Ryan. He's going to kick it out, Bradford, to Lucas Johnson. There's no hesitation by Johnson. He just explodes to the goal. Gets grabbed on the arm, goes to the deck, bounces up, and just goes to the free throw line. Uh, Lucas, who just uh, adopted that hairdo right in the first game of the Maui Invitational, that's a new do. Yeah, that's not a Lugo. That's a new do. That's a new do. That's a new do. Not a Lugo. Lugo's out of New Mexico State. He said, you know, they're always saying, my folks, why aren't you like your older brother, Brian? And so Brian's got a great head of hair and was a member of the 98 Big Ten champ for Illinois. Oh, wow. 
So, Brian so Luke like says, you know what? Just for my brother and for mom and dad, I'm going to do this to myself. Oh, wow. So, Brian must have looked like me then, huh? A nice head of hair. You said he had a beautiful head of hair. That's right, a beautiful head of hair, just like yours. Ah, just like mine. Luke has got them both. We got a timeout. We got a two point game. 3.53 left. ESPN's exclusive presentation of the ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports is brought to you by Mars Music, the music maker's destination. Stop by or log on for over 100,000 musical instruments and recording gear. And by Lexmark, passion for printing ideas. Duke with a two-point lead, trying to hold on to their top ranking against a tough Illinois team that's not giving an inch. 3.53 left in the ball game with Dick Vitale and Jay Billis. I'm Brad Nessler. A lot of scouts looking on as we are looking on. And we've been blessed in the early season with some great games. We had some at the Garden. Now we got another one, great one going on here in Greensboro. Well, you put great matchups together to get these kind of games. We come down to winning time right now. Really pay attention to the fact that the right people have to shoot the basketball. You come down a stretch, you want to make sure that the key people have the ball in their hands because every possession becomes so valuable. Right now, you want to make sure Jason Williams will wheel and deal with that rock in his hands. Matty A inside to Boozer and a push from behind. I was just going to say, Jay Billis, that Boozer is the guy that's going to have to watch out defensively in case this game stays this tight. He's got four fouls, but this time he's going to the free throw line. Well, Marcus Griffin was not smart defensively. He had pushed Carlos Boozer about a step off the lane, and as a big guy post defender, that's about as good as you can do. Then you just play him like an athlete. Once you get him off the block, it was that hand in the back that was what that call was made on, and that's just a cheap foul putting Carlos Boozer on the line for a couple easy free throws. Absolutely. And that's the kind of foul they're calling this year, Jay, and also in this game for the people out there. No exper experimental rules. The trapezoid is not in effect. It's the regular 12-foot lane in the three-second area. Boozer got them both. Well, Boozer really late in the game has stepped up a little running the basketball. Made that great offensive rebound. Boozer's had a great second half offensively after only three points in the first half. And now trying to get a little high-low action. McLean against Dunleavy who cut him off with a pass and forced a steal by Battier. Excellent play defensively by Duke. Poor job offensively by Illinois. Boozer didn't get it underneath, but he got it back. Out of bounds to the Blue Devils. Shane Battier showing you like he is the secretary of defense down here on this side of the floor. Two years in a row, he's won the best defensive player of the year award. But give an assist on that to Dunleavy, who cut him off at the pass. He ran out of real estate down there. Yeah, he did a great job cutting the angle off. They have controlled Shane Battier offensively. Yeah, they have. Battier only three out of ten, and Williams trying to get a pass to him, and Shane didn't turn around. Yeah, not a good look right there by Jason Williams. Three oh one remaining here. Reminder: ACC Big Ten Challenge presented by 989 Sports continues tomorrow on ESPN two. Our doubleheader first at seven thirty. Matt Dorley takes his Tar Heels to East Lansing. That's where Dick will be. As you see, the second ranked Spartans in that one, a rematch of last year's game that State won, and the concluding game of the challenge. Penn State coming off that win over Kentucky will take on North Carolina State. Twin bill tomorrow night as the ACC Big Ten Challenge continues and Michigan State uh, looking good so far. Yeah, very deep basketball team. They're bringing Zach Randolph, who gives them post presence off the bench with Marcus Taylor coming off the bench as well. Tom Izzo told me he likes the depth of his team. The bottom line is they got to find out if they have the same winning mentality that they had last year with Cleves and Peterson. If you remember last year, Peterson went bananas yes, against North did. Carolina at 35. Matt Darty, anxious to see what his team can do against a super top 10 club, really wants to find out a lot about him, and he will find that out. Then he's got a date with Kentucky on Saturday. Dunleavy off a great bounce pass from Williams off the glass. Good execution, special situations, taking the ball on the inbounds, getting the conversion. Dunleavy's got a season high 18. Played really well, made big plays tonight. The backdoor cut, Bradford wasn't there. The thought was good, but the turnovers makes it number 25. This game has gotten down to one simple factor. Duke has executed well during winning time, and Illinois has not. 
There's the good look into Dunleavy. Duke by six. They can take their time. And they can use that clock. There's a high percentage shot. Dunleavy wants it. Got it. Buried it. He's on fire. Get it to you, baby. Billy Self. Get it to you. Yes, sir. Dunleavy comes up big with the trifecta. Biggest lead of the night for Duke. They're up nine. And his dad stands up and cheers back home. So that's my boy. I quickly that three-point shot to break the game open. Rimmed out. Griffin trying to follow and did. I can't understand why they have not gotten to him. Went inside a little bit more to Mr. Griffin. Why they have really brought the rock inside to Griffin. Griffin has 15. Mike Dunleavy, the 6'8 sophomore, had only eight points at halftime, but he's come out and done a little bit of everything in the second half. Yeah, he asserted himself right out of the gate. There's the medium range jump shot inside the three point line. There he is now with another medium range. He's got that excellent rotation, head up all the time. And a big three pointer here. This matches his career high. He's got 21 points. That's a monster three, Michael Dunleavy. I don't think you're going to find a better threesome on a perimeter than you have down at Duke. Demolition Dunleavy. Well, that last shot might have been the demolition of the Illini with two minutes left. There's his shooting on the night. They go down to Philadelphia on Saturday, get that rematch with Temple and the Owls and Greer and Wadley and Live. That'll be a battle. Well, you better believe that. John Cheney's kids only play one way. Cameron Crazy's here. 16,000, you know, it's like you said earlier, a pretty good crowd. But the bottom line, when I think of Duke, I never think of seeing it. Well, that's seat. true. The camera doesn't hold 22 like That's the Greensboro right. Coliseum. <laughs> Not that they couldn't put them in there. They could put 40 in there every week. They're spreading the court right now, using the shot clock. Playing good basketball IQ. The shot clock will come into play for the very first time all night here momentarily. Williams had it swatted by McLean, who's played tough on both ends of the floor tonight. Rotated McLean on Jason Williams. Nice play by McLean. Now Illinois has got to think at some point about threes. They're down seven. Well, this possession's mandatory. They must score in this possession. Whether it be a deuce or three, they have to score here. Bradford will try the three. Got it. Corey Bradford, that's a big time three right there. Responded. Corey Bradford, that's his third three of the night. He's, and he's hit. Three pointers in 70 straight games, which is closing in on an NCAA record, as a matter of fact. He's three short. Let's check in with Jay. Brad, Mike Krzyzewski is just asking for a video replay on the three. He wants to look at whether Corey Bradford's foot was on the line. And he is talking with referee Mike Wood. Now Bill Self is having some words with Mike Wood as well. But Mike Krzyzewski has just asked for that replay to be looked at. Charged with a timeout if it's not a situation where let's take a battle. look. We'll take a look. This is before the shot. He makes a catch, got his man in the air. Uh, looks pretty good. That's a long ways away for us to tell. It looked like he was behind the line when he released the drive. Take a look again. Well, with a white sneaker and a white line, it's pretty hard to tell out there if his toe would have touched that or not. But I think they're saying it's good right now. Here's a different angle. This might give us another look. Boy. Well, it is close. I'll tell you, it is, so it is close. close. You don't think of me with one eye going to try to determine that. I got two, and I got no clue. I got no clue. He had some doubt. He had a legit argument. Tell you what, though. That's great coaching to, to have that kind of vision and wonder. Sports Center follows our game. 117 remaining. Dick just talked to Rick Hartson. Yeah, you can't go to the monitor to determine whether or not that's a three or not. But they just took a look on their own to make sure they got it right during the timeout. And they said it was right. It was a three. A four point game. And James got from behind. He's not normally the guy's going to bring that ball up court. 
again they spread things out and we are under a minute Duke by four ten on the shot clock spread into court Dunleavy nice spin in the lane and it knocked away but they're going to call a foul they're going to call it on Dunleavy Offensive foul. Hey, so let's straighten out that situation we just talked about. Well, Brad, any time a coach wants to, they can challenge a three-point shot. They can ask whether the foot was on the line, whether it was a two or a three. That's a scoring question or a scoring error. Mike Krzyzewski doing that because he was wrong, or at least was ruled against by Rick Hartzell. Duke loses a timeout on the challenge. Well, that's what Dick said originally. I said that originally, but then Rick Hartzell, Jay, said that you can't go do it. I think, again, we'll have to check that out after the game, but I really believe that you're right when you say you can go there for a scoring error. I really believe if it's a scoring error, you can look at the monitor, but I don't know if the judgment of a three and two is classified as a scoring error. Well, this is a rule that's confused an awful lot of people, but I believe from the interpretations I've gotten from supervisor, supervisors of officials that I've spoken to, that's perfectly legal to take a look at. Yeah, I think what they want to do is make sure they get it right, but I don't think that is a black and white in the rule book. I, I know it's not listed as a correctable error. Hey, James in trouble. And a timeout taken by Duke. Again, I said he's not the guy they normally have handled the ball on the press. And he is saying that. Get it out of my hands. And Mike Krzyzewski yelled at him as he got to midcourt and got trapped there to get a timeout. And he got it. So got we it. have a timeout with 34.2 remaining in the ball game. Duke leading by three. But as you look at what's going on tonight in the ACC Big Ten Challenge, presented by 989 Sports, Wake Forest. Robert O'Kelly at 19 in a 71 to 60 win. It was Clemson a winner 57 44 in a low scoring game. And Georgia Tech has taken the lead in the Iowa game. So it's a possibility of a sweep if Georgia Tech should hold on. And if Duke holds on to this one, it would be a 4 0 night for the Atlanta Coast Conference. Well, that would be a great win for Paul Ewitt on the road with that young Georgia Tech team. I think right now you've got a one possession game with the three point shot. Illinois, again, has showed some resiliency right. coming back as they have from being seven down. I mean, a great matchup. We got two clubs we're going to hear a lot about a March and March Madness. And they are showing right now, establishing right out of the gate, that they are, without a doubt, two of the best in America. We want to correct something. With Truck just uh, has corrected us. It's Iowa leading 58 oh. to 51 over Georgia Tech, but still a game. It's still going on in the second half. But we didn't want the Hawkeye folks to think we were crazy here in Greensboro, even though we probably are. Sports Whoa, Center is next. 34.2 or more remaining in the ball game, and Duke leading by three. You see the foul situation. The possession arrow goes to Illinois. I got it right now. Here it is. I went right to Mike Wood. You can use the monitor for a scoring error. Jay, in his assertion, was correct there for a scoring error, and that's what they did. And the reason they didn't get the timeout for Duke or didn't charge them with the timeout was because Bill Self had called the timeout first before the challenge was made. So they didn't have to charge Duke with a timeout for being wrong. Okay, here it is down to one possession. Now that we get to the game and put the rules on the side. Jason. Under 20 seconds. Jason Williams, not on the shot clock. Lobs it inside. Dangerous pass. Oh, and walked. traffic walked with it. Yeah, he walked before he made contact. Remember, we're in a one-possession game right now. So if you're Duke, you want to lock up on the three-point shooters. And there's three of them out there right now for Illinois. And Bradford. And now Harrington comes out, so I'll take that back. Here, they're going to go a little two-man game, but there's the walk before he makes contact. See, right now, if I'm Duke, I want to put pressure. I want to take some time off the clock. Now Harrington will come back in. They had to officially. Well, now they're going to have a discrepancy on whether or not he can check in. He just came out. You told him the wrong guy. Well, they're going to put Johnson back out there. They wanted Harrington yeah. on the floor. They couldn't get him on the floor at that sequence. You can't sub there. Uh oh, not a good pass. Duhon knocked it away. Good ball. See, I was just going to say, if I was Duke, I wouldn't let them shoot the three. I've been saying that for years, but he doesn't have to worry about that right now because they got the basketball. Now Harrington comes on the floor. Here's the pass. McLean trying to get it ahead to Bradford, and Duhon gets in the way, and then Bradford had it go off him. 
Yeah, just did a great job right there. Now right. they have to foul Jason Williams, and they do. Harrington does with ten and a half seconds left. Jason tonight is six of seven from the free throw line. I'll tell you, not the kind of guy that if you're Illinois, you want to see on the free throw line because here's a kid that really he plays for much time. Big turnover right there in that possession. Turnovers. Really hurt Illinois big time. Well, they had so many turnovers all night long. 26. The 26th one might be the killer. See, if I would do in that situation that you were down up three, I would have put some pressure on the basketball, make them take some time off, and then not allow them to shoot the three. Uh oh, the door is here. still open, though. The door is still open. He can close it right here. You got to scoop, my friend. If he makes this, if he makes this and gets it up the four, and Illinois pulls this out, that is miracle time. That ties a career high right there for Williams. 23 points. Now Frank Williams has got to hustle. Now you don't want to foul. You don't want to foul. I want to foul. And he got the shot. Oh, yeah. Now if that had gone, if that had gone, that would have been the miracle you're looking for. But it didn't. But he is going to go to the free throw line. See now what you got to hope for is he makes two. Miss the third deliberately and tip it in with one of your big people. And remember now in college basketball, a new rule that you cannot put more than two people on that line with the two from the opposing club. Now take a look right here. See, there's the foul. He gets the head fake. The one thing you didn't want, stop the clock. Foul. Now he's got to make these two free throws, two of the first, the first two of the three, and then miss the third deliberately. Moved out of the two Williams. Got the first. 17 for Frank Williams. You helped me out with my math. That's pretty good math, right? If he you're converts doing this. He converts hey, you're the guy that was a math teacher, I not know. me. He converts this one, and then he got on the inside. Sergio. Got the second. 18 points. Now, here comes That's the move. intentional miss. Boozer comes in. Yeah, get more size on the floor. Now what Dick is talking about, there's all the guys you can have on. And the shifting's going on, but when it all breaks out, all you can have is two guys in Illinois jerseys and four guys in Duke jerseys, everybody else behind the three-point line. Here's the ball game on what's going to be a missed free throw. Maybe you should have Ryan Cook on the line, 6'11 on that foul lane. Trying to tip oh, and he knocked it in. He banked it in and shakes his head at himself. He didn't mean to do that. He wanted to get enough on it to bounce it off the rim, and Duke is going to hold on barely. Well, that's intentional right there. I mean, I, I know he didn't want to hurt anyone, but that's without a doubt an intentional foul. Alex Krzyzewski has a legit argument. That's intentional. Two shots in the basketball. I know sometimes you say, well, they're going for the basketball. What a great effort by the kids from Illinois and a super job by Duke hanging on like they did. 14 James. Another look at the last foul. I'll let Inbounds you bounce from Dunleavy. I'll let you call this, Mr. Nestle. Here it is right now. There's the catch. Nate now, James let's watch makes right the catch, and uh, oh, oh, oh. McClain uh, makes the tackle. Oh, he makes a great tackle right there. He can play for the Fighting Illini football team. Yeah, I don't know about going for the ball. Ron Turner might want him up there. So Nate James misses the free throw. But there's only 0.8 seconds remaining. I mean, he's not going to get a shot off. First of all, at 0.06, he can only tip the ball in. Hook says .06. Yeah, if he misses the shot right now, they can't even throw the ball at now. Mike Krzyzewski said okay. miss it. He did. Game's over. Here's the full court throw. Boy, that came fairly close, to tell you the truth. Wow. Wow, what a heck of a game, huh? Yeah, it was really a great game. A lot of spirit, a lot of enthusiasm. Very tenacious battle on the inside. Illinois won the battle on the glass. Duke won the battle on turnovers, and Jason Williams was sensational. And he was our player of the game tonight. Matches his career high with 23 points, not to mention the floor game he put together to help Duke to their sixth win without a loss. And they'll remain the number one team in the country. Our 989 Sports Player of the Game, Jason Williams. Final score, Duke survived 78-77. For Jay Billis and Dick Vitale, Brad Nessler, saying so long from Green. Greensboro Sports Center is next.